Hey everybody, Pumpkin here. Today I wanted to bring you the roadmap overview. So CDPR did a Twitch stream today going over the upcoming uh, decisions they're going to be making over the next few months. And uh, let's get into it. So we're going to have more hot fixes. Uh, this is awesome. This is one of the things we've been well hoping for. Some games don't really do this very often. Um, but yeah, CDPR is going to hot fix when necessary. So new bug in theory we get a hot fix immediately or very quickly so that's obviously exciting news patches every month um when i saw this it surprised me i i honestly did not see this one coming we also want to start like uh, making sure the game is updated at least once a month uh, whether it's a small balance pass mm -hmm. or wait really dropping in so mm -hmm. we always want something new and fun and exciting yeah. happening in gwent every month and uh Additionally, we're going to start hitting our rhythm of releasing an expansion like every few months. Thank so, you. Okay. Oh, so shit. Every, few months, every month? drops, but still, you know, fun Hydra. stuff uh, in Spread between. The just keep the up. game uh, Multi-headed Dick fun. Hydra. Thank yeah, you for the $3. Dollars. Dollars. So hot fixes whenever needed, uh, regular release of new content, yep. and then every month, so every season, a season ends, we pretty much try to patch if there's, That's if there's, if there's, awesome. if there's yeah. a need for if it. Really um, most game developers, when it comes to card games, have a pr pretty... They off-hand approach. They they don't like to touch their game too often. So if you look at Hearthstone as an example, they don't they don't balance. They 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 do every now and then every four to six months they'll balance like one to three cards. But for the most part, they give you a set of new cards and you're stuck with those until the next expansion. And you'll continue to see be stuck with those cards until the set rotates out. Um, but CDPR is planning on patching every month whether this be balance changes buffs nerfs tweaks um the beauty of this is it means the meta keeps evolving keeps shifting keeps changing so if we notice within the last patch the december patch uh, a bunch of cards were tweaked and the meta shifted an enormous amount uh, the meta was completely different before december patch and after december patch uh, two completely different metas um so these patches will make the game not stale and I couldn't be happier as someone who plays the game on a daily basis. So not only do we get patches, or sorry, expansions every few months, but we get patches to keep us going. So in theory, assuming they follow through with this and they do do a patch every month, that I, I, I would guess it would be at the end of the season um, and they do do expansions every few months, the Gwent meta should basically never be stale, ever. Which is like a dream come true for a card game because that's not the case for any card game that I've ever played. So, I mean, just this alone is awesome. If they if they actually pull this off, that's very exciting. Um, we won't be reinventing the wheel, but we'll instead focus on the feel and balance of the game. Some examples of the things we're looking into right now. So... CDPR, for those of you who don't know, there used to be an old Gwent. Old Gwent um, had three rows, more mulligans, uh, no hand limit, uh, a bunch of different things. And CDPR came up with Homecoming, very, very different game. Um, and some of the things that they switched from Old Gwent to Homecoming Gwent, eh, they, they went a little too far. So they're, they're trying to find like a balance, an in-between. So reverting to the old systems of mulligans per round. Um, right now we have mulligans tied to leaders. Uh, this will be changing. So, well, in theory, I mean, they could always change it. But uh, at the moment, what they said on the stream was, uh, so right now leaders are tied to mulligans, right? If you play Usurper, you have one mulligan. Uh, in the upcoming, I think it's January patch, I would assume these changes are taking into effect. Um, everyone has the same mulligans, uh, or every leader, I should say, has the same mulligan. And the leaders will be tied to provision costs. So we'll make up a random number. Let's say your deck still costs 165 provisions. Let's say leaders are anywhere between, I don't know, 10 and 20 provisions. So Usurper costs 10 provisions and M here costs 20 provisions. Obviously, these are random numbers. Don't read into it. Um... If you're gonna play Usurper, you're gonna have 10 extra provision to work with, whereas if you're playing Usurper, or sorry, if you're playing Usurper, you have 10 more to work with, whereas if you're playing M here, you have 10 less to work with. Um, this 
obviously makes it a little easier to balance leaders instead of uh, balancing them around mulligans. We've already seen it's, it's kind of hard to balance around mulligans. CDPR, if you notice, they cut the cap at four. Philavandrel was a pretty bad leader, and they took a mulligan off of him, which was surprising, but they just don't want any leader having four mulligans, which I, I can understand. So this will be exciting. Uh, I, I hope they can do this well. I, I don't know how much what, what the variance is on the leaders is going to be so that that's going to be interesting we'll have to wait and see for that but uh it sounds good i'm up for the change um balancing leaders with provision cost of number of mulligans we just talked about that changing how the hand limit works um they were a little vague on this but basically so right now if you overdraw so let's say you go into the next round with eight cards in your hand uh, you draw three and you discard the last card they said something along the lines of the cards that you were to discard, you get an extra mulligan. So they didn't really clarify what that extra mulligan was. Is it one extra mulligan and you still discard that card that you would have discarded? Or do you draw that card? So now you have 11 cards in your hand, but you get an additional mulligan for that phase, for that, that turn. So instead of having, what, I don't know, two mulligans or three mulligans for round two, if you overdraw and draw one extra card, you'll have 11 cards in your hand and you get a, an additional mulligan, so you get four mulligans. Um, I, they, they weren't very clear on that, so I'm not 100% sure how that works. They said this will allow people to, like, there'll be some strategy into passing early, which maybe. Um, generally, you don't really want to play, like, two cards and pass, but... There could be a deck where this is necessary, like an engine deck. Engine decks generally thrive in longer rounds. Uh, they're not very good in short burst rounds. So an engine deck, this could potentially work. So I, I'd like to see more details on that, and obviously we'll get more in the future. So I, I'm unsure about this for now. Uh, as for regular release of new content at the moment, we're preparing for the release of a December hotfix addressing several bug fixes and performance issues on consoles. I'm kind of hoping they... I mean, they, they, they didn't specify here, so I, I guess they're not going to. Um, ever since the December patch, the PC deck building uh, has been pretty laggy. Uh, I'll notice, I'll, I'll just be scrolling through my decks, or I'll go to build a new deck, and the game will like completely freeze for like half a second, uh, and this happens frequently, even if I restart the game completely. So th there was some issue, I guess, with the December patch. Uh, I've heard that it's even worse on consoles, so they should probably fix that so uh ho hopefully they do a good job there uh, in january we'll be adding five new leaders to the game um i can't wait uh i i mean i was expecting the next content to be a expansion which they are having but it will not be the next content coming out we're getting five new leaders so one for each faction um i mean i'm excited hopefully they're good it would kind of suck if we got five new leaders and they were terrible and they saw no play. So it, it'll be interesting to see what CDPR does here. Uh, I'm hoping it shakes up the meta enough where it, it's almost like a, not, not really like a new expansion, but five new leaders is awesome. Assuming they, you know, build on the current deck types. Uh, they mention the Squiatel leader will be a trap leader, so one that utilizes uh, the ambush cards that flip upside down, that uh, flip right side up when your opponent does something like Pitfall Trap. So, I mean, I love Trap Squiatel. It's not great right now, but if there's a leader that supports it, maybe it could be good. I don't know. So I'm very excited for that. Um, I heard that it was January 5th. Um, if that's the case, that's much sooner than I thought. Usually they do end of month type of thing. So January 5th is awesome. That's right after the holidays, the beginning of January. Get right into January and bam, five new leaders. So <laughs> kick off the year to a great start, hopefully. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, leaders are from Thornbreaker. N next expansion is scheduled for the end of March and will include over 100 new cards. So out of the entire stream, this was pretty probably the one dis or i should say the only disappointment um i was kind of hoping for the expansion to be in january or february january is pushing it but i i kind of expected end of february so i'm a little disappointed 
But at the same time, because of the other things we're getting, such as the five new leaders and the fact that they are reworking the provisions around, uh, or they're reworking the leaders around provisions, on top of that, we're getting uh, the mulligan change. I think that, on t and uh, patches every month. So I would assume there's going to be some kind of balance patches at the end of December and January and February. So all of those things combined, I think the current player base is going to have plenty of things to do. I, I don't think we're going to run out of things to do. I, I think the meta is going to keep shifting constantly. I mean, people are already are still coming up with new decks every day or two. So I think there's plenty of things that we are going to have to do. So I'm excited, a little disappointed, but these other things make up for it. So I'm not too worried. New mechanics to the game, but it'll focus. Its focus is to flesh out the existing archetypes. Um, I'm glad that they're adding some new mechanics. It, you would never want a new expansion with no me new mechanics. That's kind of boring. Uh, fleshing out existing archetypes is exciting. I've been playing some consume uh, with Arrakis Queen on ladder, and it just feels like I'm missing something. There's there's just that there's just like one engine or, or one card that just like fits it all together, and I'm missing that card. And, and the deck could go from like meme tier to like actually a good deck. Um, what is it? Trap Squayatal is kind of missing a card or two. It needs like another trap or or just some uh, balances. Um, dryads. I would love some Dryads in Squirtle. The current Dryads, all of them suck. They suck. They're terrible. Uh, we have a Gnome in the game in for Squirtle, which also sucks because the Dryads suck. So, hey, maybe we'll get some Gnomes. Maybe there'll be a Gnome Squirtle deck. Um, as always, I'm kind of hoping for more Dragons because I love Dragons. So, maybe some more cards that synergize with Dragons like Ike of Denzel. So, this is going to be very exciting. We really haven't had an expansion from CDPR. Well, we had one, Midwinter. Um, Midwinter was not great. It was good in that there was new stuff to do. There's new content, but uh, the balancing on it was off significantly. But even worse, bugs. There were so many bugs. It, it was <laughs> to the extent where the game was almost unplayable. It was bad. Um, and that's the other thing. If it does take them until the end of march to do this i'm okay with that because i don't want another midwinter if, if they need an entire extra month to finalize the game and that extra month to get rid of all those bugs squash all the bugs make everything clean and perfect i'm okay with that uh, i'd rather an extra month where the game comes out or the expansion comes out and it's playable and everything is crisp everybody's happy no bugs, no multiple Reddit threads about this is breaking the game, that's breaking the game, terrible patch, dead game. I, I'd like to avoid that. Um, I, I don't need to see that twice. The, the last one was, uh, I still have nightmares. Well, not really, but yeah, it wasn't a great time. So if they need the extra month, I think we can give it to them, especially because they are giving us other things to do uh, in the meantime. Moving forward, we're focused on improving the gameplay to make it faster. Um, a lot, there are not a lot of complaints. Some complaints is that it's a little slow. I've been playing a uh, King Demovin deck, and sometimes I'll have a Visigoda, or I'll have a Neneki, and then I'll play uh, Baron on it, and it'll go to like 20 charges, and I'll throw them on Tritum Infantry. You can't throw 20 charges on Tritum Infantry in a turn, because the animation is you clicking on it, it's sending the boost over, it pinging a card, and then you get to do it again. Um, it takes too long. It takes too long. You just can't do it. That that That's the type of thing where you should be able to snap through it in, I don't know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Um, so yeah, faster gameplay would be great. Yeah, quality of life updates, such as the recent deck overview feature and polishing the aesthetics, including adding more diverse themes that would fit into the world of Witcher. So overall, Everything is positive. I like everything. We'll have to see how they do the hand limit thing. I, I, this is the one thing that I'm not 100% sold on. Um, the provision cost on leaders, I think, is going to be interesting and probably good for the game. It'll make balancing in the future better. And a little disappointed on the March release for the new expansion, but these other things make up for it. 
and the five new leaders i cannot wait i'm super super excited for the five new leaders especially a trap square leader that's oh i can't wait I, I i hope they give us leaks i don't know if they will i mean january 5th is pretty soon i mean it, it, it we're gonna snap our fingers and it's gonna be january 5th and we're gonna have a new update actually i kind of don't want them to show us any leaks so if we got no leaks, it means we would all be surprised on day one. Well, January 5th. And that could be exciting. Uh, let me know in the comments whether you would want it to be a complete surprise. So no knowledge other than, let's say, I don't know, like a an art leak. Art leak is fine. I mean, that doesn't tell us anything about the leader. I mean, it tell, you can try to figure out the ability based on lore but we, we don't know any specifics. Or would you rather just be completely in the dark and when it gets released, you, you just get to play and you see what it does. Um, it, my guess is CDPR will probably leak the leaders because they like to leak stuff, keep the community happy, but it, it might be cool if it was a complete surprise and we just patch hits, download the patch, log in, you instantly go into the deck builder and look at what the leaders do. Uh, that I, I think that could be very fun. It's like, opening presents on christmas day it's just like what could they be so uh yeah i'm excited i cannot wait march cannot come soon enough i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time